I'm Rafael Neville. Time now for Sunday House Call. And I'm Eric Shaw. Welcome back. Joining us as always, Dr. Mark Siegel, professor of medicine at NYU's Langone Medical Center. He's also the author of The Inner Pulse, Unlocking the Secret Code of Sickness and Health. And Dr. David Samadhi, chairman and professor of urology at Lenox Hill Hospital and chief of robotic surgery. Good to see both of you, doctors. Good to, to see you. Doctors, good Thank to see you as always. We, we start today with a new warning. You know about transplant tourism, where people can travel to another country where they sometimes can actually buy an organ, we're told, such as a kidney. Or researchers say the practice sometimes leads to possibly life-threatening infections, including liver disease, hepatitis B and C. And they say, consider this, that in any given day here in our country, there are more than 75,000 people who are on an active waiting list for organs. But there are only 14,000 possible donors. The most commonly transplanted organs, they say, are kidney, liver, heart, lungs, pancreas and intestine. So Dr. Siegel, what, you know, people say, gee, you can go save a lot of money by having this if you go abroad, but uh, there could be some complications. Eric, I want to start off by talking about kidney, because the study that you're talking about today out of Saudi Arabia uh, actually looked, and it was presented in the United States, this study looked at kidney, and it looked at the fact that we have a million people in the United States have end-stage kidney disease, that have kidney failure, they're in trouble, they need dialysis, they need a kidney. A hundred thousand of them are waiting on a list to try to get a kidney transplant. They have maybe 8,000 available from cadavers, another six. So is it a good idea to go to another country to get that? Well... To get a kidney? No, it isn't. And the reason it isn't is, and this is what the study shows, is the quality isn't the same, your risk of infection is higher, as Eric said, your risk of hepatitis is higher, and the most important thing, Arthel, is you don't have follow-up. I mean, you get your kidney, and then what happens to you? You've got to find another doctor. You know, and with Dr. Samadhi here, by the way, he operates on prostates. People come from all over the world. He makes sure to do follow-up. He goes overseas to Cyprus, to Dominican Republic, and he makes sure people have follow-up. You've got to know who your surgeon is. Mm -hmm. You've got to know how to check them out. You've got to know what the quality is you're getting. With a transplant, transplant failure is a huge problem. One, one more point. Once sure. you have that kidney... It becomes a medical issue. It's no longer a surgical issue because people reject their kidney and they get infection. So you have to have the follow-up. So, Dr. Samadhi, what do you say to people out there who are on this long waiting list? They need something that's going to save their lives. They're, I don't care. I'm going to go try it someplace else in another country if, if, if it, it may extend my life. Arthur, I think uh, you're up to something because kidney failure and renal failure is up on the rise. As we're getting older and as obesity and diabetes is on the rise, we're going to see more and more and really the supply doesn't meet the demand. So what happens? Exactly what you said. They get frustrated. You're on hemodialysis for a long time. They have to spend 12 hours with these filters. And kidney is so essential. Did you know that about 200 liters of blood goes through our kidneys, about two liters of urine is produced, and if they don't function well, your acid base, your sodium, potassium, it's a nightmare. So what happens is they go to China, Philippines, Pakistan, Iran, because now you can buy a kidney. The problem is that the screening for these kidneys is not the same as the United States. We look for HIV, we look for hepatitis, we look for CMV, cytomegalovirus, and they don't do that. You know why? Because it's all about money in these countries, and the follow-up is a disaster. Now, I want to talk about a patient of mine who went to Costa Rica, got the renal transplant, and ended up almost coding on the table. Really? Later on, I found out he has prostate cancer. We took care of him. But look, if you're going to do that, and you're desperate, and I don't recommend this, at least take your surgeons with you as a desperate mood. Now, wait, is, wait, 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 excuse me. So you're saying to take your surgeon from here? Like if you're my surgeon, I take you with me? To yes, you can. If, you're, if you have to, it's not recommended. But if you're desperate and you're going to do that, which I don't think it's a good idea, then at least take a team with you if you can afford it. The problem is that a lot of times these surgeons may not be as qualified. When you talk about kidney transplant, the ureter and putting the ureter to the bladder, the vasculature, the arteries and the veins, that takes a lot of skills. So the answer to your question, find out who is doing it. What kind of center? What if some complication happens? Does your insurance covers or not or do you have to pay? So a lot of question goes into it. When we have a patient and we have a lot of international patients come for prostate cancer to see me, we go through all of this gamut with them. So they're comfortable, they have videos, they know what they're getting yeah, but themselves into. Yeah, coming here into. is different though. I mean, it, 
I would think that that's the whole idea, that we're having this segment saying, hey, beware, don't just travel to another country to have these surgeries. I think kidney transplant and any kind of transplant, and Mark, I'm sure you agree, is a different animal when it comes to going to foreign countries. Completely if you agree. have a superb surgeon who takes your gallbladder out, your prostate out, maybe you can make a case of it if you have done all the questions. Mm -hmm. But to put yourself, because you need to worry about rejections, you need to worry about getting infections, you need to worry about surgical complications, so I would think twice, and there's also kidney Registry.org. One of the things that's important is if you don't, you, if Eric, if you're not a good match for Mark, but our is a good match. match for me. If you got, <laughs> you can swap a lot of these kidneys, so it's not one on one anymore. There's a whole registry yeah. out there where people can help but, each other, yeah, and that's I mean, tremendous. Mark, in general, you hear about this uh, people going abroad. Do you think it's a good idea in the first place, even with other issues here? Absolutely not, okay. unless there's something over there that we're not doing over here, which is very rare. One final point. The best centers are the only ones that do it here. So, you know, it's not like every hospital get a kidney transplant. And, and I want to make one final plea to the people out there. When I say that there's a million people with end-stage renal disease, dialysis only lasts on average about three years. We need more organs. We need you to sign that donor card. Oh, yeah. We need Great. more That's a good organs. point. Also, it's good for people to know about their hemoglobin A1C. Diabetes is a huge risk factor for kidney failure. Check your urine. Go to a urologist and check your urine for protein. If you see protein in your urine or blood in your urine, blood in your urine, because that's how you'd know. See, now you're... <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly. great. Exactly. I like that. <laughs> and uh, know about these things. And once you monitor your blood pressure, etc., you can save those kidneys. That's lifestyle changes is a big key. Definitely. And by the way, we are not suggesting that there are no top notch, doc top -notch doctors anywhere else in the of world. Of course not. We're not yes. saying that. And I'm glad that you picked the right color today. Green is the one. Thank you You're for welcome. the permission. <laughs>